Hi, I'm James Clark. I'm the co-founder of Room 214. I'm here with my friend Gail Van Gills. She is the founder of Transform Your Culture. Welcome back, Gail. Thank you so much, James. Okay, well, we've covered it quite a bit up to this point. Uh, and now we're moving to, well, I think it's actually a really interesting topic in terms of self-compassion. And so we always talk about having compassion for others. Why are we talking about self-compassion rather than compassion? Great question, and the answer is because the first step to being able to have genuine compassion arise from you as a genuine feeling is you have to be kind to yourself. So if you're beating yourself up, it's almost like a mirror. The same judgment that you give yourself, you give to the world. So we're not aware of how critical we are of ourselves. And actually, I can guarantee you that I am my own harshest critic. You couldn't say anything to me that I hadn't already said in a worse form to myself. And probably that's true for you too, because we're never satisfied. And we're always looking at what we're doing with the critical eye rather than a favor favoring eye. So we have to become aware of this. And we have to start with ourselves and working on this self-criticism. And then if we recognize that what we're saying to ourselves is a story, and that once again, just like we talked about earlier, this story is running in our minds and we have the opportunity to, come, to notice that and come back to what's really going on, then we can begin to become kind to ourselves. Like once again, you're talking about awareness. Yes. Uh, like in the moment of like recognizing what we're thinking, and then having compassion for ourself. Could that be like, I had a bad night's sleep, have compassion for myself if I'm feeling a little tired or not on top of my game, or I'm not, you know, your best is really dependent on a lot of different variables. That's right. Some days your best is gonna be better than others. Yeah, and in, in a way, it's sort of like, if I told you I had a poor night's sleep, or I'm feeling a little tired, you'd go, it's cool, Gail. I get it, so let's just go a little easier today at work or um, you know, let me know when you need to rest or you'd be kind to me. Mm. And that's all we're saying is can you actually be that kind to yourself the way that you would naturally be to another person. It's harder for us to say to ourselves, wow, I had a bad night's sleep, I'm going to have to monitor you know, how much I can do today. So it's, it's definitely using the same kind of skills you would use to, to, to help a friend or a loved one on yourself. And you can do that for yourself. I mean, the science tells us that we can soothe ourselves. We can release oxytocin for ourselves. We can improve our own moods. Basically, coming back and taking a breath is a big part of that. It's moving out of our head all the anxiety and stories that we're telling ourselves back into the moment, grounding and getting some perspective. And that in itself can reduce stress and anxiety and this, this kind of cutting behavior that we're doing to ourselves. You can also actually soothe yourself sort of in the way that a mother holds their baby. Mm -hmm. By touching yourself, you're releasing oxytocin. So there are small things that we can do that um, help us to make ourselves feel better in the moment but also to gain that perspective of whatever it was that I'm criticizing myself for, whatever failure may have occurred or mistake that I just made. I'm only human. And so that ability to see it in context and then forgive yourself, be kind to yourself, that's part of developing resilience. So this resilience, this ability to come back from self-criticism, to come back from failure, to come back from um, any kind of adverse circumstance, whether you're imagining it or it actually happened, this is what um, self-compassion is about. And in that self-compassion benefits you as someone who can be a leader, um, someone who wants to be a mentor, let's say. It's just like, it seems to have its own ripple effects throughout the organization. The better you treat yourself, right. the better you're able to treat others and the better others are able to treat others. Well, it's like you mentioned earlier, that self-awareness, that awareness that you're doing this to yourself immediately translates into the awareness that other people are doing it to themselves too. So it can help you help get someone else out of 
their self-defeating attitude by recognizing what they're doing or recognizing that they're yelling at you or their reaction is that they're actually beating themselves up. Mm. So you become, that's where the compassion naturally arises from the self-compassion is you don't have to focus on yourself. It naturally turns outwards. You recognize it in others and you want to help them through it. So, so I'm hearing there's just little tools, techniques, having a level of awareness of self-compassion actually leads to kindness. It leads to kindness, it leads to empathy, it leads to um, all the further stages of connection that we'll be talking about in our next conversation. Awesome. Thank you, Gail. Thank you.